Welcome to This Week in Big Sky Basketball. I'm your host, Denise Thompson, and I am joined by Coulter Nuanez of Skyline Sports. How are you doing today, Coulter? Well, it's all of a sudden winter uh, up in Montana. Uh, we were having a calm winter, and then now, now it's seven degrees and it won't stop snowing. But I guess we're used to it at this point, so bring it on. Please don't do that. It's been 50s and sunny <laughs> here, and we're right in Utah, so we definitely don't want any of that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's been so crazy, like you said, of just different things going on. And right now on the women's side, Idaho State, Idaho, Montana State all have at least 11 overall wins. Talk about the depth that the women's side has had over the past couple of years. You know, in a normal year, we're talking NITs, WNITs and everything else. Um, just talk about how good that is to show that the level of competition in the big sky is just as good as anywhere else. Well, I think that so much of it comes from the history of the league. Montana dominated the league for so long, and so much of the key to Montana's success was the stability. Robin Selvig being the coach for 38 years, I think it proved to teams around the league, if you invest in a coach and you have a really good one, you stick with it, they're going to get your program to be a bona fide you know, mid-major power. And that's what you have at Montana State, Idaho, and Idaho State. All, all of those coaches have been at their respective schools for more than 10 years, and uh, I think that that stability is showing through now. Because I think that even like with Montana State, for example, you graduate one of the great classes in the history of the school and you just reload. I mean, they're the number they're the number one youngest team in the entire country right now playing six freshmen. And yet they're on a six game winning streak and they're alone in third place in the conference. So I think Trisha Bidford has done a great job of just establishing uh, that that that's a program that just continues to bring in talent. But John Newley and Seton Sobolewski have done the same thing at Idaho and Idaho State. So I think that the stability in the coaching ranks is, is the number one factor here when you look at those programs. You know, you're talking about stability and things that maybe you didn't see coming. Right now we have four men's teams with just at least six conference wins, but just two losses. Did you foresee this pileup coming, you know, so late in the season as we cross that midpoint portion? Well, the teams that are there, uh, it, uh, my preseason poll, I voted Weaver State number one because I thought that Coach Ray had brought in a ton of really, really talented, high major caliber transfers. And if there's anybody that can make those guys mesh quickly, it's Coach Ray. I mean, he's the all-time leading winner in the history of the league. He's been at Weaver State for 15 years now. So uh, he's got – you're talking about stability. He's got that going at Weaver as well. I was higher on Southern Utah than a lot of people were because I knew that they had – some really talented returners coming back. And then Eastern Washington was the overwhelming pick to win the league. So you look at those three teams, I'm not surprised that, that they're in that position. When you look at Montana State, I think there was optimism coming into Danny Sprinkle's second year. But I think a lot of people wondered, you know, how do you replace a guy like Harold Frey, who was a unanimous first-team all-league selection last year? And definitely, I mean, he was the catalyst to everything Montana State did a year ago. Well, Danny Sprinkle's done a good job of, remaking his entire roster. He brought in so many talented transfers. I mean, the entire roster is his already in year two. They only have one player that's left over from the Brian Fish era. So I think the Montana State's maybe been a little bit of a surprise. Uh, but when you look at those four teams, you know, I think that they all are very competitive. They all play a different style. Uh, but the fact that there's four teams tied at the top, given the schedule that we've played, the cancellations that have caused some of these teams to miss each other as well, I think that I'm not surprised that those teams – are sitting in the position that they're sitting in. And uh, I think it's going to be a fun stretch run to see who comes out on top for the regular season league title. And for anyone that had been watching Big Sky Men's Basketball this past weekend, the Montana State men did play at Weber State in two crazy games over the weekend where Montana State was undefeated in conference play heading into those Wildcats series where the Wildcats were able to come away with two. You know, you said while the Wildcats were your preseason pick, did that series give you all that you thought was going to happen? I mean, they're incredibly talented. I mean, honestly, when you look at what Weaver State, just the, the personnel that they have, I mean, they have guys that look like high major level players. I mean, when you bring in transfers from Florida and Northwestern and Utah and, you know, all like Loyola Marymount, I mean, they have so many guys from different programs. But I think the magic has been the fact that they've all bought into the system and they're sharing the ball. I mean, you look at, they're the fifth, I think fifth or seventh, it depends on, I guess, how the statistics play out, but they're in the top 10, we'll say in the country in scoring offense, but they ha don't have a guy averaging over 15 points per game. It's because they have five guys averaging double-figure scoring. I mean, they're sharing the ball at an exceptionally high level, and it's pretty incredible to watch because Coach Ray has been such a, such a great recruiter of high school talent and then developing that high school talent. And you talk about you know guys like Damian Lillard and Davion Barry and Jeremy Sanglin and Joel Ballaboy. All those guys blossomed into borderline NBA-caliber players 
at Weber State. But now it's a new model that Randy Ray is using, bringing in these transfers, but getting them to mesh. And I think it's, it's been – it's good for the league because Weber State has such great tradition. And when, you know, when Weber is down like they were last year, it's just not as good for the league. So the fact that they're back in the mix – and up at the top of the standings. I think it's a test with the job Coach Ray's done and just the talent he's brought in, but also the buy-in of those players as well. Speaking of that and everything, if you could describe how the wins and losses, the the buzzer beaters, the blowouts, the things you just didn't expect happening in the 2021 season, what would your tagline for this season be so far? (laughs) I I think I'd call it the sequel or the opposite because basically we're seeing the same games being played twice in a row I mean, the like Montana State, Weber State game, games we were just talking about, largely the same last week. Two really high scoring, up and down, high tempo games with the exact same margin of victory eight points. Weber State won both those games by. But then a lot of times you see adjustments and you see these completely different results as well. I think it's the, it's the product of the back to backs. I think that when you have a good game plan, you roll with it. And I think that both sides a lot of times do that. Or maybe you have something you didn't expect. So you make a big adjustment and it makes the other game, that is the second game go completely different. So I think that we're seeing a lot of games with very similar complexions in the second matchup, but then we're also seeing games where it's a completely different type of game as well. So, I mean, if you're either seeing the sequel or you're seeing the opposite result of what you saw on Thursday night, every Saturday. Absolutely. And, you know, up next we have Mary Lou's cook where she's going to talk about the big sky players of the week that includes someone that had a crazy game winner. Someone that stepped up for their team against a tough series. So we'll return shortly. Thanks, Denise. On the women's side, we saw Kyrika Rashid of Northern Arizona earn the honor for her performances against Sacramento State for the first time this season. The 2020 Big Sky preseason MVP averaged 18 points, 12.5 rebounds, 2.5 assists, and a steal in two games. Rashid was the only women's basketball player last week in the Big Sky to record two double-doubles. On the men's side, we saw sophomore Cizoho Jawara of Weber State earn the award for the first time this season. Over series against the Montana State Bobcats, Jawara averaged 21 points and shot 72% from the field. His impressive performance helped lead Weber State to a home conference sweep over the Bobcats, who were riding a seven-game win streak. He was perfect from the free throw line in both games, shooting four of four on Thursday and six of six on Saturday. Back to you, Denise. Thank you, Mary Luz, for showcasing the players of the week. And all right, culture, this week, I'd like to know, who do you think was the top playmaker on the women's side? Well, on the women's side, I think that someone that maybe uh, hasn't gotten enough attention during her senior year after having an outstanding career is Kylie Jimenez at Portland State. She's one of the league leaders in assists. And, I mean, she was a, a catalyst for that conference tournament championship team a couple of years ago when Portland State went to the big dance. But she's also been getting it done on offense, and she had a clutch shot at the end of the game in regulation to beat Montana on Thursday. It was her shot with about 2.3 seconds left that helped Portland State. I think it was only the third time, they maybe third or fourth time they'd ever won in Missoula. So a, a great win by Portland State. And I think Kelly Jimenez, she's been a, a great playmaker. But, uh, you know, I think we talked about Reagan Skank a lot on this show as well at Northern Arizona. She's doing a great job, too. I mean, she's leading the league in assists during conference play. She's also one of the best rebounding guards in the league as well. But you, you could pick a variety of playmakers on the women's side because I think that from top to bottom, I mean, you look at Portland State, for example, they're in the bottom third of the league standings right now with one of the better point guards in the league. But you have outstanding point guards at Montana State, at Idaho State, at Idaho. So you had just, you, uh-oh, got a call. You have outstanding point guards at Idaho, Idaho State, Montana State, Montana. So I think that there's just great playmakers across the board in the women's league. What about for the men? Well, on the men's side, I actually hadn't realized this until I checked the statistics for this show. Cam Shelton's scoring numbers in Northern Arizona have been getting a ton of publicity, and, and rightfully so. I mean, I think he's in the top 10 or 15 in the country in points per game, averaging 23 points per game. I did not realize that he was also leading the conference in assists per game during conference play. That's impressive. I mean, that's James Harden-esque to be able to lead the league in scoring and assists. So he's been doing a really – Good job. Uh, One guy that I think that is uh, really acclimated to a role, and we'll see if it starts producing results, because I know that we've talked about Montana and their struggles early on here. They have such a young team with nine newcomers on the floor, and they're playing a bunch of freshmen. One guy, though, that's kind of gone unsung is Cam Parker. He's a transfer from Sacred Heart. When he came to Montana, he's the single season or single game, excuse me, record holder for assists in a game. He had 24 assists in a game at Sacred Heart. 
And now that he's kind of acclimated to Travis DeKir's system, he's really been good at, at facilitating. Right now he's leading the league in assist to turnover ratio. Uh, he's been really good off the bench for Montana, kind of giving them a steadying presence at that point guard spot. So I think on the men's side as well, there's a lot of really good playmakers. But you got to give Cam Shelton a lot of props. Be able to score 23 points a game and still lead the league in assists, that's pretty impressive. There were a lot of tough games this past week. But whose team defense do you think really stepped up when it mattered the most? Well, you got to give credit to Portland State first and foremost because I know that they have had – in a year that's been weird for everybody, Portland State has had perhaps the weirdest year. They, they weren't able to start – practicing or doing any team activities for months later and compared to most of the rest of the league. Uh, Barrett Peary had really no returners coming back. I mean, he only has a couple guys on his roster, period, that were even on the team last year. They brought in nine transfers. That's an amazing number. And so it's taken them a little while to mesh. But then this last weekend, uh, they got in a couple slugfests with Montana State. And with Amari McRae, who's one of their best players, out, they were still able to hold Montana to 54 points in regulation and 55 points in regulation, and they earned a sweep over the Grizz. So I thought that was a, a, a great defensive effort um, by Portland State. And, you know, I know that Southern Utah, they're getting so many uh, accolades for how well they're scoring the ball, but they've been playing pretty darn good defense as well. I know that they've had uh, some interruptions here as of late, but I think that Southern Utah's defense is a little bit underrated, and they've been doing a pretty darn good job defensively as well. What would you say on the women's side? Uh, the women's side, I think that the, the catalyst to the six-game winning streak that Montana State is on, you look at the scoring numbers. I mean, they scored 102 against Weber State and then 85 the next night out, and those are impressive, particularly the second game when you talk about only one player in double-figure scoring. They had 12 young ladies get in the scoring column. Well, that is all keyed upon, though, by their defense. They're forcing turnovers, and they're turning those into buckets. And so I think that Montana State, the way that that young roster has really figured out the system and really locked it in, has been crucial to how well they've played over the last month. But then you also have to give credit to Idaho State. I mean, that's been their identity under Coach Sobolewski for the duration of his tenure, and they're doing it again. And that's I think that's the number one factor to why they're sitting atop the league standings undefeated. So, Coulter, I know you're going to want to give me a lot of names, and you can't do it. Who's taken – the game-winning shot right now on the women's side. I think you got to give it to the player of the week, right? I mean, Karika Rashid just hit a buzzer beater. So it's got to be her. I mean, she, she just proved it. So I think you got to give it to Karika Rashid. It's good to see that she's uh, rounding back into form because I, I know she's battled some injuries, been banged up a little bit. But she's one of the best players in the league when she's healthy. And uh, I think that she will be a catalyst if any of you is to sort of surge down the stretch here. But, I mean, the fact that she just did it, I think that she's the, she's the must-have answer. That's the one you got to go with. All right, so let's switch into the other side. What about the men? I think you got to give it to Robbie Beasley because he did that exact same thing for Montana on Thursday. He drilled a 30-footer to send the game into overtime. I mean, yep. Montana was dead in the water. They were down four points with like six seconds to go. I had no idea how they even forced overtime in that game. But then they did, and the, the buzzer-beating heave was what got them to extra time, and then they dominated it. And, you know, even though the Grizz have struggled this year, the fact that they were able to get that win and then come back from Portland with a split, that's a lot better than going to Portland and getting swept. So a uh, huge uh, shot by the freshman. And uh, I think that's the silver lining for what Montana's got going right now too, is that they are playing so many young players. It's unfamiliar territory for them to be in the bottom half of the league standings. But the fact they have so many young guys, uh, I think that they're a team that's, that's dangerous as we continue to march down the stretch here, because I think that once it clicks, I think that uh, that's a team that's a lot of, a lot of, other teams are not going to want to play in the tournament. We've had game winners. We've had, you know, down to the stretch games, top defenses, series that, you know, are phenomenal. Um, up next, we have Mary Lou's who will break down the standings. But you and I know that this week will just be, you know, a catalyst that keeps going for all the great basketball that has been played. So thank you so much, Culture, for joining us as always. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. With a month left in the season, Idaho State, Idaho, and Montana State have emerged at the top of the standings, all within striking distance of the coveted number one seed on the women's side. Idaho State and Idaho will face off this week in a battle that is not only between in-state rivals, but as a battle between first and second in the conference standings. It's one that you won't want to miss. The Vandals will be looking to end the Bengals' 13-game win streak. Now, the second longest win streak in the conference is held by Montana State with six, followed by Idaho with five. Last week, 
week, the Bobcats swept the Weber State Wildcats at home in Bozeman, while Idaho picked up one win on the road and one at home against Eastern Washington. On the men's side, the Big Sky saw major changes in the conference standings last week. Eastern Washington was led by Michael Meadows, who scored 33 points to lead the Eagles to a sweep over the Idaho Vandals, while Weber State notched two wins over Montana State at home. As a result, Eastern Washington moved up to first place with a 7-2 record, while Southern Utah, Weber State, and Montana State all sit tied for second place with six and two records. Now know that you can catch all the Big Sky basketball home games for free on Pluto TV. Until next week, let's keep the conversation going on social media. Be sure to give at Big Sky Conf a follow on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And if you're looking for around the clock information on Big Sky basketball, be sure to follow at Big Sky WBB and at Big Sky MVB. Thanks for joining us for this week in Big Sky basketball. We'll see you right back here next week.